This is CGTN, China Global Television Network. Hello and welcome to this special edition of The Point with me, Li Xin, coming to you from Urumqi, capital of northwest China's Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. I'm pleased to have the Secretary General of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, Mr. Vladimir Norov, as my special guest today. He and his counterparts have been on a three-day tour of Xinjiang. Mr. Norov, thank you so much for accepting our interview. Could you help us understand exactly what brought you to Xinjiang this time and what are the places or people you have met, you have visited so far? Uh, thank you. So uh, we're visiting Xinjiang, uh, a delegation of ambassadors from Eurasian countries and at the same time uh, countries of Shanghai Cooperation Organization. We are in, invited by the government of uh, Xinjiang province and uh, we had good chance to visit beside Urumqi. We visited uh, Kashgar and Aksu. S these three important cities of Xinjiang province which played important role during centuries, thousand years on the Silk Road connecting China with the Central Asian and Asian and uh, European countries. Mm -hmm. So what, what do you want to see? I mean, when you embark on this trip, what are the focuses of your, your visit? Uh, my focus was, first of all, uh, to see how developing the Xinjiang province and its uh, such famous cities. Because I, uh, from my time uh, being in Uzbekistan, I uh, citizen of Uzbekistan, representative of Uzbekistan. I was born and grew up in Bukhara one of the Asian cities of our country and the one of important city on Silk Road. From this time, I know the history of Xinjiang. I know about the uh, role played by these cities. And now we know about the uh, role of these cities in implementing the initiative of uh, President of China, Mr. Xi Jinping, One Bell, One Road, in implementing this initiative, uh, Xinjiang province and these cities and these three cities playing important role. Mm -hmm. That's why for me it was very interesting to see how it is developing first of all and how these um, uh, ethnic groups living together and peace and stability. It was important for me too because here living more than 50 ethnic groups in these regions and at the same time it was important to look at how it was possible to eliminate the extremistic and terroristic activity in this uh, region because Xinjiang have uh, close interconnection with the SEO countries and first of all with the Central Asia. So help us understand your impression after three days of touring around of the socio-economic development of these regions. What's your impression? Uh, my impression certainly uh, uh, how it is growing very rapidly economy of this region and uh, only last uh, years, from 2015 to 2019, GDP of this uh, region uh, growing from more than 900 billion yuan to 1.4, perhaps 4 billion, trillion yuan. At every year, more than 7% growth of GDP. And th this is not only figures, it is concrete construction of uh, entre new enterprises, industry, new industry, uh, one only example that uh, 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 Xinjiang region, with the, uh, one of the leader in the alternative energy, solar energy and uh, wind energy, and at the same time uh, Xinjiang providing 90 province of China by electropower. So uh, we could see this how, to, how it is growing agriculture in this country, how it modernization of agriculture because some. Uh, agricultural products which is produced in Xinjiang province, the same produced in Central Asia and in my country, Uzbekistan. Mm -hmm. It is cotton, it is fruit and vegetables. So uh, we were, uh, we witnessed it, how it is um, uh, modernized, how it is used, uh, new uh, technology in agriculture, for example, unmanned uh, planes for f spreading fertilizers of oils at the same time a satellite system for monitoring on the uh, situation in land area. 
So it is a, a very more interesting things could see there, but more impressing when you uh, uh, riding by car or flying by plane, we could see this uh, everywhere going construction mm -hmm. apartments, and uh, we could see the new constructed enterprises at the same time uh, going on this construction. But at the same time, uh, what impressed the tourist infrastructure. Tourist infrastructure. True tourist infrastructure and uh, impressing that construction and quality of roads. I work at uh, perhaps 13 years in European countries mm -hmm. and I can say that the quality of uh, the roads in all areas, in all uh, cities which we uh, visited, the high quality, world standards quality of these roads. Mm -hmm. And as in China saying, if you would like to be rich, you should construct the roads. And that's why I think it is one of important result of reforms and economic development of Xinjiang, that all region have such infrastructure. Well, you just now also talked about one of the aims or one of the focus is to see how people of different ethnicity yes. coexist. What's your impression there? Could you give us an example or a moment or some people you met, you talked to, which uh, yes. left an impression? Uh, we had uh, visited a Central uh, Bazaar uh, market here in Urumqi where we could see this at the local ethnic groups uh, could uh, uh, doing their business, for example, the same time we could see there the, uh, as a handicrafts and the same time we could see this here is, uh, I, I honestly tell you that I never see such places where so many national musical instruments mm -hmm. could be sold. And, uh, uh, in the bazaar? Any type, in, in bazaar, yes, any type, what you like uh, for your uh, cultural performance. And the same time we visited in Kashgar the old city. Uh, it is uh, where living more than 200,000 ethnic groups, uh, Uyghurs mostly, and uh, at the same time uh, this area was completely reconstructed and uh, we could see this modernization of this area in, in, in communication system, in infrastructure for uh, electricity, gas and water supply. A hundred percent of people is supplied by this important 100%. issue. percent. hundred percent as a mayor of city told me uh, because he said because uh, Xinjiang region have its own gas and one of the biggest producer of the gas in the China but at the same time in uh, Kashgar we could see the center for uh, water pumping center for supplying the population with the water mm -hmm. it is impressive during one year it was constructed this uh, system new system and more than uh, perhaps 300 kilometers of pipelines constructed and at the same time, the clean water to every family, to every home, to all ethnic and to all citizens, regardless of their ethnicity, it is supplied and we could see how it was used before. Yeah. Well, you also talked about the fight against terrorism, which yes. is a very important part of the government's job and, of course, very important for the society here. Uh, what is your understanding now after this trip of uh, how they have been fighting terrorism and what does it mean for the Central Asian region as a whole and even for you know larger um, area in terms of uh, security? I will tell you that in beginning of 19th when Central Asian countries uh, obtained independence when the economy had in the bad condition because I remember in Uzbekistan it was inflation 2000 unemployment was, it, it was shortage of goods in shops because the Soviet system disrupted and we during one day lost the money and we lost uh, our own earnings, uh, not only private, physical person, but uh, at the same time state. It was time when some terroristic and extremistic organization tried to destabilize situation in the region. By this purpose, they wanted to implement their own goals. But uh, at the same time, uh, uh, in 2001, on 15 June, the six leaders of uh, countries, four Central Asian, it is Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, and uh, China and Russia, uh, in Shanghai signed an agreement about establishing Shanghai Cooperation Organization. What is important, it was six months before 11 September 2001 when terrorists attacked the New York. And uh, what is important, this uh, first documents which was adopted in this time, it was 
con uh, Convention for Fighting Against Three Threats of uh, Terrorism, Extremism, and Separatism. And in 2004, in Tashkent, in capital of Uzbekistan, was established a regional anti-terroristic structure. And uh, this structure played an important role when united the efforts of all countries of ACO for fighting against these three evils. And uh, Xinjiang uh, was on one area which is attacked the same by this terroristic and extremistic organization. F uh, in this beginning 90s, the same situation, economy in Xinjiang region was not as today as in Central Asia, we remember it. And that's why uh, this uh, Islamic uh, movement of Eastern Turkestan here was very active, uh, and the same in Islamic movement of Uzbekistan, this such terroristic organization on territory of neighboring Afghanistan where civil war during 40 years made the good ground for activities such terroristic. And several terrorist acts occurred in Uzbekistan, I remember it's well in 1999, in 2005, and that's why these uh, efforts made here for eliminating threats of terroristic and extremistic activity played an important role for stability, not only for province of Xinjiang, but stability is important for economic and social development in any country. The same, it played an important role for strengthening stability and security in whole area of SEO. That's why we visited the exhibition uh, where we could see the photos of terrorist acts and thousand terrorist acts occurred from beginning 90s till 2000, uh, I think 15 or 16. And uh, it was uh, very, very uh, such uh, negatively certainly had impact on economic and well-being of people. And that's why the steps taken by authority and uh, law enforcement agencies uh, for preventing this terroristic and, uh, and uh, extremistic activity played an important role. And uh, what is important, I, I can say from our experience of Uzbekistan, that first when we uh, focused on arresting of young people, it not played well because in jails they became more uh, terrorist <laughs> than in the... More and radicalized. Why, yes, more radicalized. That's why we focused on professional education. And that's why it is important decision made by the authority of province for organ developing professional education and giving chance to this young man and woman to obtain some profession and to find their jobs. Not to marginalize, marginalizations. I witnessed it in Europe when I worked in uh, Brussels and uh, Molenbeek uh, district of this uh, uh, city, uh, they are concentrated migrants then were not uh, giving chance for integration, they were not giving good chance for um, obtaining such profession and first of all to study the languages of uh, European languages as in Belgium it was French or uh, uh, Dutch language. Yeah. So therefore in China, uh, being part of China, they also are required to learn Chinese uh, to be able to communicate with their compatriots. But it, it is seen as some kind of a, you know, eliminate efforts to eliminate their culture. How do, you, how do you see that? I mean, when you talk to people, do you have a sense that efforts are being made to maintain the cultural legacy of other ethnic groups in Xinjiang? We visited primary school in Kashgar city in some uh, village where uh, studying young girls and young, uh, young boys and young girls are impressed by their education. They educated uh, in their own language, Uyghur language, studied there, it was educated, several classes we visited Uyghur language uh, by the Arabic letter as it was historically here. The same time in parallel they study English language, but the technique of educating English very perfect. I remember my school time when we studied English language, so we were not such successful and we used the Russian letter to pronounce. <laughs> it was, yeah, and uh, now is is uh, very active this young man, uh, they the studying English, but parallel, the same time Chinese language. As we could say, the some of teacher of uh, this uh, school, young lady, ethnical Uyghur, uh, her name was Ainas. Her name is Ainas, this young lady, a Uyghur language. She studied in Guandun province in university, specialized in music, and, and now came back and teaching in these schools. And what is impressing, we could see the class where these young Uyghur girls and boys, 
st uh, studying their uh, music, their playing on this national instrument. Mm. Till now, I have such uh, uh, pity that uh, feeling uh, that I had not in my child time, school time, to study such, uh, to play on our national instrument. We had the classes of music on piano, but at the same time, not everyone could play on piano by your national instrument. It is important. I am impressed, and I am uh, sad that this young man. You mean you mean that? Yes, yeah, Dutar. The Dumbla, Dutar, uh, Dumbla. <laughs> Dumra, Dutar, Dutar, yeah. uh, Rabab, uh, uh, Rubab. Uh, we have the same uh, instrument as here and Daira, and uh, the, that is important because they are developing their culture. They not lose their identity. If someone think that if they will study Chinese language, if they will now more integrated with China, they will lose their identity as a ethnical group. Not. It is uh, by this policy, very wise policy, which is organized there for educating these children their own language, but at the same time English language, because now globalization, it is needed. We, the China is open more. So I'm going to ask you last question. I'm sure you have read about all the reports, all the allegations against Xinjiang from the international media. Uh, do you have some better understanding now that you visited this place? Yes, certainly. This is now all world news uh, full by such uh, information about such uh, non-property. Uh, but I can say that in the uh, cotton area, if we look at and could see this uh, 84, now this year they planned 85% of cotton will be harvested by machine. Uh, and this machine produced in Aksu, the Aksu is one of the main cotton producers. That is why uh, I can say that uh, technology which is used in the cotton production very impressive. And at the same time we visited in Aksu textile company were uh, very modern, they are very, there are many, uh, there is not hand work, it is very less, 5,000, uh, I can say, uh, w uh, employees, 90% of local ethnic uh, people, uh, Uyghurs and Kazakhs and others who represented there, and I can say that uh, their uh, life conditions, we could see not only a place of where they work at in these very modern textile machines, uh, each uh, textile producing country could dream about having such machine. And we visited their living uh, area where they living uh, and f uh, eating area, kitchen, where they uh, had the chance uh, free of charge. This, But if they would like to have more, they can pay for them. It is choice to them. Mm -hmm. And the same time as a Muslim for them, it is halal uh, pr uh, produced cuisine. And the same time salary, what is important salary, they have from 600 till 900 dollar per month salary it is i can say that it is one of the highest for developing countries in textile industry mm -hmm. it is impressive uh, and uh, i can compare with the salary in uh, our countries that's why i could say that uh, this uh, before make such a statement any site it first of all should come and to see and in our countries, our uh, Asian people said, then 100 times to hear, it is more important one times to come and to see. But, yeah. Yeah, but some people are saying, look, Xinjiang is not open, it's not transparent, they don't let people, they don't want people to see, or they show you, they only want to show you certain things and not the other. What, is, what, is, what uh, do you say to that? I am not agree with such statement. And because uh, uh, today, for Xinjiang not to be open, it is impossible. Why? Because economy developing, the relationship of China, this uh, and Xinjiang region with others. Xinjiang have the common border with eight countries of ACO. It is uh, Mongolia and uh, Kazakh, uh, Russia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Pakistan. So relationship till in pandemia time, where certainly same restriction, it is going on. In, China, in uh, Xinjiang, uh, last year was 180 million tourists. Before pandemia, they had uh, perhaps 70 million foreign tourists, not Chinese. And this year, they are uh, accepting, um, uh, planning to have 200 million tourists, but in 2025, 400 million. So it is where tourists, if can visit tourists, there is not restriction. How we can say that it is closed? No, it is, I'm not agree with this because we had chance to see uh, everything what we wanted and to go anywhere 
where I would like to go. That's why, but the uh, program was so uh, tough that we uh, had no time for rest. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is sure. was possible. Yeah. I, last, what I can say, uh, I important, I think the role of Xinjiang in the uh, uh, trade economic development of SEO countries is growing. Transport infrastructure is important. Xinjiang playing important role in Hargos, Alashankau, this on Kazakhstan, China border. The, and now we're planning to develop construction in Royal Road, China, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, and, uh, and, com uh, and tracks delivering groups, uh, goods by trucks from Uzbekistan through Kyrgyzstan to Kashgar, and from Tajikistan the same, from Kashgar to uh, uh, Kyrgyz body, it is 91 kilometers. And such, we, uh, we had a video conference with the Alibaba and with the uh, Kashgar city administration talking about uh, implementing project for developing a logistics center for developing transport e-commerce. We could see there, uh, I, we impressed it, I personally, we because the same none we producing in our country, <laughs> okay. and lots of... Uh, you mean the Xinjiang bread? Xinjiang bread, yeah. it is bread, it is made, it uh, is specialized, it is, it is impressing. And in parallel, they are selling it through a packaging very modern uh, the, uh, and packaging and selling it to through uh, uh, electronic uh, uh, e-commerce. Mm -hmm. Two ladies promoting it. How interesting. Impressive. That's How why interesting. such logistics center, if we could construct on the border with Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan with the Alibaba and the government, we will talk about it. So trade, uh, uh, the uh, growth of economic growth and importance of Xinjiang will grow much more than today. Thank you so much, Mr. Vladimir Norov, Secretary General of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Thank you. Hello and welcome to a special edition of The Point with me, Liu Xin, coming to you from Urumqi, the capital of Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. We've heard a lot about the Islamic culture in this city, but do you know there are other religions being practiced here as well? I went to a Christ church in Mingde Road in Urumqi and I talked to its pastor, Ms. Fan Chengguang. <laughs> This is a brand new church that has just been renovated and brightened up. How old is this building? The construction of this church started in 1994 and was completed in 1995. Now the area is 2,400 square meters. The first to third floor is the nave and the fourth to sixth is the office area. Shall we go inside? Sure, welcome. This floor is meant for small gatherings. In the past, small gatherings would be held here. Sunday worship usually takes place in the main nave on the third floor. On Sunday, churchgoers will worship together here. There used to be two worship sessions on Sundays. The first session usually has a congregation of about 1,500 or 2,000 people, and the second has about 1,000 people. There were originally 20 churches in Rumuchi. This one is the oldest and largest in area, so we have a big congregation. The second floor is the main venue for usual gatherings. You also celebrate some very important uh, Christian holidays, right? Uh, such as uh, Easter or Christmas. Do you also have uh, relevant activities to mark these days? Yes, that's a good point you make. There's a lot of focus on religious holidays in Christianity. Directly in the front is where our choir sits, and on either side of that is the pastor and service leader. So, in this city where there are multiple ethnicities and multiple religions, very diverse culture, you as a group um, following Christianity, are there any special features towards uh, your existence here? Um, what do you think differentiates the Christ churches in inland with this one that we are standing in? Yes, it's the same in terms of religious policies. But given the reality on the ground in Xinjiang that is a multi-ethnic and multi-religious region, we need to pay attention to the mutual respect between the different religions and learn to live in harmony with others. 
In fact, we often have some interaction with Islam, Buddhism, and Taoism. For example, during the holiday seasons, we send them some greetings. In addition, we also care about other religions. If they face any difficulties, then we're ready to help. Many years ago, a fire broke out in a mosque here. After we found out about it, we went to help them. Sometimes the clergies of various religions and religious people would visit each other. For example, they would visit us here, and we would visit them as well. This is how different religions build peace and mutual respect. Another issue is ethnicity. Since we're in a multi-ethnic area, we also promote solidarity and mutual respect among ethnic groups. We've been seeking such solidarity by trying different approaches. For example, we used to have a medical team in our church, and we would sometimes go to communities of ethnic minorities and provide free medical consultation. In fact. This is a way of finding out how Christianity itself can adapt to a socialist country. We can also enhance the interactions between ethnic groups. This may be something we need to take into account more often than churches in other areas of China, and we need to make efforts in that regard. Our church has also gone through different stages of development since its establishment in 1945. During the decade from 1949 to 1959, the church stopped functioning completely. After the reform and opening up in the 1980s, a government policy was rolled out that the whole compound should be returned to us. So in 1995, we rebuilt this church, which holds a very important position in Xinjiang, because it has a long history and the development of Christianity throughout.